Start each meditation session with a determination of what you want to do. Focusing on the doing rather than on the results. Because the results will sometimes come quickly, sometimes slowly. Sometimes it seems like they're not coming at all. But you have to have a certain amount of conviction that, yes, your actions do have results. In the same way as when you plant a seed, you're convinced that the seed will give, give a plant, but sometimes the plant will come a lot slower than you expected. But that shouldn't stop you from planting the seeds. You read in the texts about the stages of meditation, it all sounds very smooth and progressive, like every day and every day way it's going to get better and better. But then you would look at your actual practice, and it's not that way. It has its ups and its downs. And that's only to be expected. The important thing is how you react to the ups and react to the downs. And we do want the meditation to go well. The Buddha's not playing gotcha, in which he tells you how nice the meditation can be and then criticizes you for wanting to have it. That's not the game he's playing. He's not playing a game at all. But you do have to realize the mind is a complex phenomenon. There are lots of yous in there, lots of voices. It's a, sometimes called call a committee, but it's more like a raucous meeting sometimes. And you have to learn how to be a patient observer to figure things out. In the same way as the people at listening stations during a war listen very carefully to the enemy. And they can't let themselves get excited or depressed or impatient. They've got to keep listening, listening, listening. Because you never know when the enemy is going to do or say something that's going to be important to know. So think back on the skills you've developed in the past related to sports or music or any manual skill, and try to think of the attitude you had toward the times you made a mistake. And particularly the proper attitude to have, in other words, the attitude that allows you to try to figure the mistake out and then figure out another way of not repeating it. It requires a willingness to sit with some mistakes for a long enough time until you can understand them. We have to bring that same attitude to the meditation. So when things go really well, you don't get complacent. You try to notice, okay, this is what the mind is like when it's going well. And then when it's not going well, this is how the mind is like when it's not going well. And then figure out, well, what exactly is wrong? Sometimes you just have to see it going not well quite a while until you catch what you're doing. So try to develop this part of the mind, at least one member of the committee that's the observer, and is always on an even keel, reports just whatever. Without getting upset, without getting excited. Just noticing, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. This is what alertness is all about. It has to be based on a certain amount of equanimity and a certain amount of conviction. All too often we hear that Buddhism is a religion with no need for faith, no need for conviction. But the simple fact that you're sitting here working with the mind requires some conviction, especially when the, the downs go for a long time. You've got to be convinced, okay, you can figure something out. You'll figure this out one way or another. And so you stick with it, stick with it. And it's that determination that you set up at the beginning of the meditation. That's what will see you through. If you stick with it, of course, if you drop it, then you just give up. You don't learn anything that way. You've got to 
Make up your mind this is what you really want. And the Buddha has a principle that sh should support the determination. He calls it yourself as a governing principle. We're told many, many times that the concept of self is something the Buddha wants you to erase. But that's not the case right from the beginning. From the very beginning, actually, has you develop a skillful sense of self. And the self as a governing principle is reminding yourself you're doing this because you wish yourself well. Then it makes sense that the amount of suffering people have in their lives has a lot to do with the state of the mind. And here's a way of getting your mind in shape. So if you gave up, would you really be loving yourself? That's a skillful use of the concept of self. So bring it out to use when you need it. You remind yourself that this is for your own well-being, even though it doesn't seem to be going anywhere right now. Watch patiently, because it's through the watching and the patience that you'll see things you didn't see before. Because that's what the meditation is all about. Things that are going on all the time in the mind, but you're not noticing them usually because your attention is someplace else, and yet they're creating a lot of suffering, a lot of stress. And so you want to be quiet enough and alert enough so you can see these things that you've been missing, because it's all right here. Everything you need to know is right here. It's simply a matter of catching sight of things. And sometimes that really bad meditation will yield some really good insights. Conversely, it's possible that when the meditation is going really well, you're not noticing anything at all, you don't learn anything from it. So just because the level of pleasure is not there that you want, doesn't mean that the meditation is bad. Or when things are going very pleasantly, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good. We're not here just for the pleasure or the pain. We're here for the understanding. Now, the pleasure, when it comes, will help us along if you, you learn how to use it properly. It gives you energy. It gives you strength. It's your food for the practice. But this is a kind of eating in which you're working at the same time as you eat. In other words, you don't just wallow around in the food. It's not like a Roman orgy. We just gobble down all you can get, because then you get bloated. And you get distracted from the task. They take a little time to eat, and you work. They have a little more time to eat, and you keep working. That's how you get to stick with the job, and that's how your nourishment doesn't get in the way of the job you want to do. So when the meditation goes up, your mind doesn't have to go up with it. When the meditation goes down, the mind doesn't have to go down with it. Keep your mind, keep the observer, the quality of alertness on an even keel. And that's how you see things that you never saw before. When John Mahabha talks about singleness of mind, he says, this is the quality, it really counts as singleness of mind, not the fact that your mind is always focused on one thing. But it has this sense of solidity in the face of whatever happens. So trying to determine on this quality of singleness, to determine on the, the doing aspect of the meditation, and that's where the results but you learn from them. And the more you learn, the more of a stock of things you'll have to remember. So the next time the mind is in a particular way, you can remember it used to be this way, and this is how I dealt with it, and this is how I got results. And you try that. And if it works, okay, if you learn something good. If it doesn't work, you say, well, maybe I didn't observe it carefully enough the last time. Or maybe this is not quite the same state of mind as the last time. But at least it gives you a fund of things to fall back on. And it's in this way that the meditation develops and grows.